Dr. Madila says the notion of thinking that Namibia has only achieved political independence with no economic independence is wrongly perceived. This, Dr. Madila says, will not just happen automatically, but need planning, which has been the case since independence. When you go through a struggle like that, you first have to be politically independent to be able to be your own, to, to have your own country. It's a political thing that you get out of South African colonialism, and then you are running your own country. After you have re achieved that political freedom, of course then, how you carry your freedom, then you move towards economic freedom. You move towards better freedom, better, better country where you educate your people. Dr. Amadila cited agriculture as one of the critical segments that still needs to be uncovered, which she says could advance Namibia's economic growth. She has written a book called the empty armchair, which looks at agriculture in Namibia. Now aged 81, she enjoys doing urban farming. We have been importing food, which we can plant ourselves. So I, I'll show you my garden. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think there are things we have to look at, particularly this COVID has also Teacher taught us some few things to be independent and to be looking up, up, after ourselves. I was very embarrassed to one day when I was driving somewhere there, finding a truck coming from South Africa with onions and tomatoes. I said, what is this? We can plant this. We have so many rivers. Amadila served in different portfolios before and after independence, among them Minister of Health and Social Services and Deputy Prime Minister until she retired in 2010. While serving as a Deputy Prime Minister, she showed her generosity and dedication in working with marginalized communities, which includes the Overhimba and San people, making sure they had access to education as well as health facilities. Building schools and hostels for the kids. Was, and I'm so impressed to see that yes, day before yesterday when I was handing over that um, house for the new teachers, because we are now going to do up to grade eight, grade eight, nine, and ten now in that school. Mm -hmm. I was looking at kids sitting there, and they were, it, am I in to school? So what's happening? Mm -hmm. Because when we started, I started with 25 children, and they were wearing these things, traditional. Mm -hmm. Today, they are in uniforms, school uniforms, looking like any school. So her life story is recorded in her autobiography, Making a Difference. Yeah. Selima Henok, NBC News, Vantuk. Okay.